run through uh, Active Directory, the basics of Active Directory, how to configure uh, users, how to configure computers, um, security groups, etc. So if you open up your server manager, under your tools area, you'll see a number of options here. Okay, so you've got domains and trust. So domains would be used for, um, uh, if you've got say multiple domains in a forest, you've got your parent forest, and then you've got multiple domains within your forest, you can manage it, you can swap between your domain controllers, um, you can set up trusts between domains, uh, say if you're in a company that's acquiring another business and you want to acquire their Active Directory, you can set up trust between the two so you can share uh, you know, your users' um, login, credentials, etc. Okay, um, we're going to look at users and computers for this exercise. So if we open that up, in here, you will see the way that this is structured. Okay, so you've got mydomain.com, which is the domain that we just configured. All right, and it's broken down into users and computers. At the moment, computers is empty because you don't have any computers or any servers uh, that are bound to this domain, okay? Users, by default, when you set up your domain controller, a number of groups are defined and created by default, okay? So for example, your domain admins. So this would be members of this particular group have got domain admin rights. Members of this particular group have got schema admin rights. We're not gonna go into too much detail about what each of these are, uh, but you can read, in, read into them a little bit better. Uh, essentially, they're just blank, but you can assign certain policies to them, which is uh, really helpful. All right, so the way that I generally like to do it is I like to create a, another OU or an organizational unit um, to manage the Active Directory um, structure a bit easier as well. So if I go into new organizational unit or an OU, and I'm going to call this my, let's say my AU, uh, let's, let's just leave it, my AU business, my business, okay? And we'll untick that just for now because I want to be able to edit it later on. And then within here, I want to create another users, oops, another OU, we want to call it users, another OU and call it computers, we want to create another OU and call it servers. Security groups and process accounts. Okay, let's just use that as a strength, a standard, um, standard structure. So let's create a new user. Now you can create users within here as well if you want to, but because you've got all these default ones, let's just leave those in the root and then manage everything new within our new OU structure in here. So this would be helpful if you've got say multiple sites, you know, um, you've got a site in, well I'm in Australia, but say I've got a site in Melbourne, I've got a site in Sydney and a site in Brisbane, I can create a new OU group for each one. So I'll call this one Melbourne, I'll call this one Sydney, I'll call the other one Brisbane, and I'll create my own users, computers, servers, security groups, process accounts within each one of those new OUs, okay? You'll also see domain controllers listed here, and this is the particular domain controller that we've got right now. Okay, so this is the when you when you defined uh, and and set up the domain controller role, it's created a uh, entry within your AD as well for your domain controller. All right, let's just go users. So I want to create a new user, new user. So you right click, new user. So let's call this first user John Smith and we'll give it the username of John Smith at mydomain.com. Okay, 
let's give it a password of hello at 123. So we've got a few options here. Uh, let's say if this is a business, you want to perhaps set up a temporary password if it's for somebody that's starting the business. So let's just say you want them to change it at the next login because the password that you are signing by default is a temporary login. So by doing this, it's a forced change when they log in for the first time. Let's leave that off for now. And we want to say user, uh, well, we want to leave the rest as is. So password never expires. Um, user cannot change password. So we want both of those options unticked because we do want the password to expire and we want the user to change their password after a certain amount of time. And we want the user to be able to change their password if they need to. Account disabled, we don't want their account to be disabled. Okay, and finish. That's created one there. So let's just create one more. And we'll call her... Uh, Sue Matthew. All right. Sue Matthew. And we'll give it the same password. Hello at one, two, three. Hello at one, two, three. Leave all that as default. Okay. So we've now got two users that have been configured. All right. So now that they're configured, you could potentially go and log into a device, you could log into a server, you could log into something, all right? We'll go into that a little bit in a while. The other thing you've got is uh, process accounts. So a process account is essentially a user uh, account, but could be used for servers, say for, uh, for example, a SQL server, an SQL server, um, or a backup server. You don't want a particular username assigned to that, you want a process account assigned to that, and you want to give that account different properties, okay? So we want to create another user, and we'll call this one um, SQL user, okay? SQL user, SQL user, all right? We'll give it the same password just for now. But instead, what we want to do is we don't want the user to change password at the next login because this is now a process account, okay? We do not want the password to be able to be changed and we want the password to never expire because if it expires, then we lose access to that particular service that is using the process account, all right? So we'll leave that blank, okay? Then you've also got a thing called security groups. Now. Security groups, if we, or if you remember in here, that's essentially what these are, okay? These are all security groups, as you can see from the type. So we wanna set a new security group. We're gonna say new group, okay? And we'll call this group IT admins, all right? Security group, okay. Now at the moment, we've got these two users in here that are just sitting here. Now, what, 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 I, what I mean by that is if I open up Sue Matthews and I go into member of, that's empty, all right? So we want to assign a group to this member or a member, a, a, a user, we want to assign a user to a group so that we can work out uh, who has rights to what, and rather than setting up every user individually. So, so let's say, for example, I've got, I've got a folder that I want to give access to a particular department, say the marketing department, and I want just marketing to be able to access this folder. Instead of me creating the security permissions on that folder and creating each individual user and adding them in there one by one, I can create a security group called marketing users and add all the marketing users within AD to that security group. And then that folder, I give the permission security group marketing, right? The marketing security group. I just add that security group and that will be sufficient to pick up all the marketing users that are within that group, okay? So what I mean by that, let's say IT admins. I want my IT admins 
to be John, all right, and Sue. So by default, that has found John and Sue because we created them within users already. All right, okay, and okay. So if I go back into users, John Smith, and I go back to member of, you'll now see that he is a member of IT admins. You'll also see that he's a member of domain users. So by default, every new user that is created will be added to the domain users group. You can find that within users, domain users. Okay, and then you'll see they're all listed in here, including the SQL Server security group that we just created before. All right, so they're all gonna be added to domain users by default. Computers, servers, essentially the same thing. Servers is just a management thing. Uh, you put your servers within the servers OU and computers and others, I say other devices in the computers. So to create a new computer, new computer, I call it uh, my Windows 7 computer. Well, it's too long. My Windows 7. Oops. My Windows 7. Okay. And I've created now that. Right. So when I need to uh, bound bind a computer to AD, that group. That, that uh, computer account already exists within AD. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to Digital Byte Computing for a whole bunch of more videos.